You're watching GTV Breakfast. My name is Kafu Day. Now, the passage of the, the anti-LGBTQI plus bill by Parliament continues to stir a lot of public debate with uh, various groups and associations describing the law as uh, draconian. However, before the President uh, can even take a, a decision on the bill, some Ghanaians are already in the Supreme Court to challenge the bill. Again, a lot more people have raised issues with uh, some aspects of the bill. And uh, this morning, one of the strongest advocates for uh, the bill has joined me for a conversation. Mr. Moses Fo Amwaning is Executive Secretary of the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values. Good morning, Mr. Amwaning, and it's good to have you here. Hey, my brother. How are you doing? I do like my name. You're looking good. So are you. How do you say Trumu in Evi? Uh, maybe, maybe it's buttocks. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the inner workings of that is. But it's, so maybe yeah. it will be well. We're going to learn a lot of things today. Indeed. So I was looking at the memorandum yes. um, um, for this promotion of proper human sexual rights and Ghanaian Family Values Bill 2021. I saw a very long uh, acronym: LGBTQQ. Blah blah blah. IAAP plus. Exactly. What's going on there? Good. Um, before I start, let mm -hmm. me just. Uh, say a few things. First of all, you know, to the family of uh, John, his pretty good friend of mine, John Kuma, oh, you know my condolences. Yeah. Two, um, you know, the LGBT phenomena has generated a bit of heat. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the people who have formed groups that have spoken against it are very good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Audrey Gadjipo, myself and Audrey go way back. I know her very well personally. And so I am pleading that we don't take pot shots at her. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. and everybody who is involved in it. The yeah. coalition has been very, very clear on our position. We're serious because there's got repercussions. But the last thing that we want to do is to verbally off, uh, you know, assault people. Because yeah, yeah. in the law itself, mm -hmm. even as currently passed, if you verbally assault an LGBT person or anybody engaged in whatever, whatever way you think mm -hmm. or physical, it's an offense. Yes, so I'm saying. pleading the people are very civil sure. in the way they react. Mm -hmm. Now, let me, uh, and I'm happy you've begun from there. We've got to do a lot of unlearning. The, you know, before we proposed the bill, and by the way, some jo uh, George and all the other MPs were thankful to them for the work that they've done. But the coalition is an amalgamation of all Christian groups in Ghana, GPCC, Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Khalid Bishop's Conference, and all the other groups. And then we have our Muslim brothers with us as well, mm -hmm. and then the chiefs and the queen mothers. So we actually supported this bill. In fact, the coalition was formed in 2013 on the 18th of December as a reaction to what, uh, you know, you remember uh, Cameron and his statement and Professor Mills's reaction. Indeed. You know, so we wanted to aggregate and provide a consistent platform for ad pushing our own view, that is the African and Ghanaian viewpoint on the matter. Mm -hmm. So what's the unlearning that we need to do? In respect of the bill, we actually divided the LGBT movement into two. And you've got to be very careful. There are those who've gotten into this LGBT phenomena, one, because of peer pressure, uh, you know, uh, supi supi, they get into school, they get into trouble. Two, uh, those who get into because of economic reasons, uh, you know, uh, just as we have male, pro female prostitution, there are those who get into it because of, you know, monetary reasons. Yeah, yeah. Then there are those who are into it because of uh, certain social circumstances. A girl gets raped by the father very early. So he, he acquires what the psychologist would call frigidity. She's frigid. So she doesn't want to know about any man. And they get into a lot of trouble, uh, into trouble when they get into school and even in society. And then those who are in it because of biological reasons, hormonal imbalances. And at the right time, I'll exp explain. Kasper Semenya, for those of you who like sports, mm -hmm. is a classic example. Yeah. South African uh, this South African 800 meter athlete, she's female, but there's an excess of testosterone. Mm -hmm. So she's got the power and, and, and the ability to run the physical power of a male yeah. because it is the male testosterone hormones that make you capable of running. The power is stronger, you know. So she's been asked by the International mm -hmm. Athletic Association to reduce her level of testosterone. Mm -hmm. So there's treatment for it. Mm -hmm. you know, we'll deal with it when we come to, uh, you know, where I'm born like that and all of that kind of situation. So these are people who are in, get into it because of several reasons. For those people, our decision and the policy of the, uh, the coalition and of the bill was to say what they need 
is care, treatment and support. And we also put in there what we call flexible sentencing policy. I have the old bill here. It has changed now and I'll explain why, how it changed. So for those who into it for all these reasons, we propose flexible sentencing policy, which meant that during arrest, during trial, during investigation, even when you're being sentenced, even if, when you're in prison, if you say that you needed help, we use the word recant, but you can replace it with the word remorse. If you said that you needed help, then you were not going to be put in prison. So for those who are worried that the major plank of the bill was to incarcerate people, I'm saying false, false, false. Never was the basis that we propounded the bill. That was not policy. Our bet was to go for those who say we love it. We like it, we want to push it. And there are many of them. And they are pumping lots of money into the Ghanaian system. And not only Ghana, the whole of Africa. Look, let me give you a classic example. Who are they? That, well, the LGBT movement. It's an international movement formed in the 50s and 60s. Ask yourself, how did it happen that the United States all of a sudden, in the 60s you could, or 50s, you could hardly talk about LGBT matters. But now they've grown so huge that if you go to England now, and you want to preach, even if you quote the Bible, you'll be arrested. You know, there's a, a priest in Finland who has been prosecuted for hate crime simply because he put the quotation of, of, of Paul in Romans that homosexuals or homosexuality is against the Bible. He's been prosecuted. Question, how did we come this far? It was because of consistent you know, well-orchestrated social movement by the LGBT movement. So they love it, they like it, and they pushed a lot of money into it. Do you have like a like a, 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 a an HQ where you know this is the headquarters? Yes, in California, they are in New York as well. In England, they 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 call themselves I will remember, Stonewall. They manage all their activities, and you know they're very forceful. Recently, the BBC had uh, a little investigation how Stonewall had pushed themselves so much into BBC's activities that they were not objective. The finding of the committee was that the BBC had been pushed too far to the left, and they are very consistent. Look. When you see in uh, on the English League, uh, the captains putting on the rainbow, it's not for nothing. They have paid for it. Now, let's go back to the United States. Right now, by the Biden administration has appointed uh, LGBTQ plus envoy. The name is Jessica Stan. She's paid $180,000 a month to push LGBTQ plus activities around the world. She's visited so many countries, probably hasn't come to Ghana because of uh, the, the way we're, we're pushing against this. So when you see the U.S. ambassador pushing this agenda, it is because they have a strategy and they have pushed this through all the system that they have. So the point I'm trying to make is, in the bail, we were not for putting people in prison who genuinely run into these problems. They are our guests, we care for them. And by the way, the coalition has what we call a holistic sexual therapy system where we've been treating hundreds of such people. It's a fully fledged medical system fully funded, you're not going to pay a penny. And we've treated lots of people. I'll give you good examples of success that we've had. So I'm just trying to make all your audience understand that the policy behind the bill was not to, criminalization was good because it will serve as a deterrent. But for those who run into the, the criminal arms of the law, we provided an opportunity for them to undertake what we call care, treatment, and support. Those that we're looking for are those who are funding it, and I'm telling you, they've brought millions of dollars into the country. $200 million were brought in last year. We know they were going to increase the amount. What's the evidence? All the evidence I will show you. You go and talk to the, you know, uh, uh, the commission on uh, uh, the HIV commission. Amounts of money that have been brought in to help what we call MSM, men sleeping with men. <laughs> they buy them condoms and they buy them lubricants. Lubricants for what? That's why I asked you, was there ever name for Trumu Trumu? Mm. For, you want to encourage the person to have anal sex? And I have the CDC report here, the consequences of having anal sex. So your question was very valid. What is LGBT? What is, this, what is it all about? Because part of the LGBT strategy, very fundamental strategy, which was written for them by a marketing consultant called Paul Rondeau, they went to him and said, look, how, how do we make people, you know, uh, like uh, homosexuality? And by the way, there's a book written, it's called After the Ball, you can Google, written by Hunter uh, Matson uh, and, and, and Marshall Keck. You know, the title is After the Ball. How 
America will conquer its uh, fear of homosexuals. It tells you the strategy of the LGBT movement. Now, what was a you know marketing strategy? What Paul Rondeau told them was that look, because what you do and the consequences of it are so repellent, move away from it. What do you have to do? Focus on what they call social abstract constructs. What does that mean? Well, good, fantastic. So you talk about minority rights, civil rights, discrimination, democracy, constitution, all those things that you hear. And you saw my good friend Audrey articulated very beautifully. They will not talk about what they do and the consequences of it. They will rather focus on these social abstract constructs. So back to your question, what does LGB, what does it mean? Oh, you are every man. Let us describe what they do, and then you will see whether this is human rights or not. The L stands for lesbianism. What do lesbians do? You know, you open in the sexual... By the way, let me get a distinction. There's a distinction between people who have a tendency to it and those who are actively engaged in it. Mm. I hear a lot of propaganda that the law has criminalized the, just by identify. It's not true. I will quote the law for you to see. It's not true. It is the application of the law that we state those that it applies to. But in terms of the criminal acts, nobody who has a tendency is criminalized. Mm -hmm. If you engage in the act, that's when the law will get hold of you. Mm -hmm. So what did so what you have does, to commit the act to be... Exactly, to, to, to have committed an offense. So let's talk about what they do. Uh, the proper act, you know, uh, in lesbian activities, a, a lady opens her vagina and another lady licks hair, uh, her vagina. A vagina, sometimes you've gone through menstruation, there are droplets over there. Is that what we call a uh, human right? What is gay? Or they use, uh, what they call, is it doodle? Dildos. 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 What is that? Sex Why don't you go for the real thing, you know, to make yourself, uh, uh, you Harry. know, uh, exactly. And then, gee, gay uh, uh, sex. You put the penis through the anus, is the anus the orifice for sex? Well, you know, if you look at the human body, the human anatomy, clearly the anus is not the orifice for sex. And uh, I will have a little demonstration. You are sitting here with water. Try pouring the water through your ears or your nose. See what will happen here. Your producers, your cameramen, they're going to go on a break and everybody is going to rush to you. Why will they do so? They will do so because the ear or the nose is not the orifice for water. And we know it, it's a matter of fact, it's scientific, you can't run away from it. The B is even worse. Uh, you know, you have sex through the anus and you have uh, sex through the vagina. The, the, exact, the dangers of it. And then you have the transgender, you know. Uh, they are, the, by the way, there's a difference between Transgender and transversites. Transsexual. Uh, exactly, transsexual. Those who go through the medical treatment and the therapy to change their sex are the transgender and the transverse, transsexuals. The transversites are those who cross-dress. Mm. They are the transversites. Uh, we, I will tell you about the solution, the dangers of transgenderism to even women's rights. Uh, we'll discuss that as we go on. Uh, and then pansexual. A pansexual is somebody who can have sex with both animate and inanimate objects. So, for example, he could take a piece of bread, he will break it into two, put his penis through it, uh, you know, uh, exercise Simulated. himself, and then ejaculate into, the, into bread. the bread. How can all these behavior, you, make, you, you think that it affects democracy? It affects uh, minority rights. It affects, what, what is this? It can't. Clearly, when you describe what they do, you will know that this has nothing to do with human rights. So that's why they moved away from what they do and the consequences of it and focus on this, what I call social abstract construct. There, that's a strategy of the LGBT. There are movement. two Qs in this long acronym LGBTT, QQ, IAAPP, P. So the Q, is, there's queer. Queer. No, one is queer, mm -hmm. the other is questioning. Okay, so what's the first one? What is, what, queer, queer people even have sex with animals, bestiality. <laughs> How can you say that a human being was born to have sex with a dog? How can that be possible? Clearly, that's an aberration. And that's what hurts me. People like this, what they need is to be guided away from that behavior rather than saying, oh, it's a human right, mm. let us push them to it. For me, that is even against the International Convention on the uh, Economic and Cultural Rights, an article of which states that a nation state, a sovereign state like Ghana, has the obligation to, appro to give appropriate and proper health uh, uh, information and also health facilities to people who are in need. So when Ghana adopts a position that we disagree with the international position that one, this is part of international human rights law, mm. two, we don't believe that 
it is uh, right and therefore what we need to do is to give help and assistance we are fulfilling our international law obligations we are not doing anything which is against international law by the way it is not if you say i've described what they do mm -hmm. ask yourself what you questioning Yes, the other what? question means, as I say, you, you, you know, you're wondering you're sure in your mind, mind exactly. And people say, oh, those people were criminalized. not true. We say that when a person is questioning, you need to give the person information mm -hmm. so he will be able to, he'll be guided away from that, uh, promoting mm -hmm. that habit. I, know, I means inter intersex. Uh, you know, intersex? In intersex. Well, we took intersex out of it for a good reason, mm -hmm. because that's a biological like problem. Like Exactly. We, we've taken like. that one out. And by the way, uh, I heard Audrey say that it was their advocacy that made us took out the intersex. No. Audrey, that's not the case. Strictly speaking, if you look at the law, as we sent to Parliament, intersex people were never criminalized. We said that if a doctor is given scientific or help to an intersex person, he's not committing an offense. It's there in black and white. We only added it because the LGBT movement had been very clever. They wanted to increase their numbers. So they added the Exactly. So you can get them. That's why you have all of this with a plus. So, so, so hermaphrodites, uh, people with like both organs, exactly. those, 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 are those, those are the intersex. intersex. Exactly. Then there are two A's too. Asexual and... Asexual and... Um, I'm uh, looking for it. You know, two A's. And a P. A P is pansexual. What was that? And uh, Pansexual is what I've described. They have, you know, sex with both animate and inanimate objects. Oh, I mean, and anything stuff. goes. Bread... So some of them are even married to vehicles, you know. Your, your, your car? Yes, my the pickup, the boys' brigade car, which was donated to yeah, us. That becomes your spouse. <laughs> That's it. I'm happy. That's how ludicrous all of this has become. And to think that the whole international community has been hoodwinked into believing that this is true is very helpful. Somebody and that's ask, the role of our coalition, okay. to expose all this falsehood. The question to somebody listening to you today is, why this agenda to normalize all these, these behaviors? Fantastic. What is the end game? Exactly. I'm a Christian. So I'll say the end game is part of a religious fight. Somebody may not believe. So let me put my religion aside. What is the end game? The end game is dominance. Because ask of, yourself. Of whom by who? Of the Western European Caucasian viewpoint that has always been colonialist inclined. And Nkrumah called it neocolonialism, which is the last book he wrote before he died. We call it cultural imperialism. Because ask yourself, uh, uh, my brother, right now, if you go to the United States, there's an act they call the Anti-Polygamy uh, uh, Act, which criminalizes polygamy. You have criminalized, indeed, people have been jailed on the basis of that law. Two Mormons were jailed in 1982. So why is the U.S. ambassador not, not seeing that you've criminalized polygamy in the United States and Western Europe? You can't go and, you know, in Ghana, you can register polygamous marriage. Mm -hmm. Try and uh, certify it at the U.K. embassy if you want to travel. They will throw it away. As rubbish, they don't accept it. So you criminalize what we like. When we criminalize what you don't like, it's against human human rights. So where's the human rights coming from? The United Nations agencies, UNICEF, you, all those. You had a UN ambassador or commissioner here talking. Why doesn't he complain about the fact that in the United States and in Western Europe, polygamy, which is what we like, has been criminalized? Out and Africans who want to, you know, get into polygamy, also human beings, don't they? Constantly constitute a minority? What's all this about? So it's all about a dominance of one viewpoint over another. It could be European, I don't want to racial uh, flag Racialize all of this, it. but that is the truth. They want to dominate us with their views. Otherwise, and I'm sad about the you know, finance ministry, why write a report and say, oh, if we don't we sign the bail that says that people should not act like this, then we're not going to get billions. Really? Let's look at the flip side. So if we sign it, then what? Then because of us getting involved in anal sex, look at the things I've described. Mr. Finance Minister and your experts who wrote it to the president, aren't you ashamed of yourself? So if we get involved in this, uh, anal sex, a uh, man marrying a, a vehicle and a woman opening her vagina, then we'll get billions of dollars? Really? Is that how Ghana's sovereignty has been reduced to? I find it very offensive and I wish that Ghanaian leaders will wake up to this. I was told a very sad story by the former minister of um, uh, health. He told me, look Moses, the reason why some of us are not coming is we're being pressurized. And I know the president is pressurized all the while. He said, you know, Who's pressuring they, him? 
Lots of people, Western European uh, governments. Indeed, I know that, uh, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't mention that a very important person in Ghana said he called the U.S. ambassador and told her, look, my sister, we knew in the past that the United States was about human rights, which was proper human rights. But why are you pushing us into all of this? Are you not colonizing? She apologized and went away. Next day, she was doing the same thing. So why all this pressure? You know, and, and let me finish the story. You know, uh, the, the mental health... Uh, board receive help from a particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you know, European uh, country. I'm not going to mention the name. Uh, they come to him and say, "Oh, because Doctor say, and by the way, Professor say is part of our coalition because we're, during the presentation to Parliament, Mental health, right? exactly, he made a presentation scientifically to indicate that LGBTQ plus activities are abnormal, as you've stated, and they don't belong to the abnormal scientific strand because there is a scientific way of determining abnormalities it's called the Burns curve." He demonstrated it because he has said that. They said, oh, because your professor is saying it, we're not going to bring you money. He was very sad. And according to him, during the period of professor say, the, they didn't say they were not going to bring the money, but the money never came. And he was saying that the agencies that came to him and said, if you don't uh, speak for us, then we're not going to bring you the money. Affecting mental health. So do they really love us? You know, and you ask a very good question. What is the motivation? If you care about us, you want us to be successful. Why would you take money that is supposed to help mentally uh, uh, sick people who need help on the basis that we're not allowing people to have anal sex? What is the meaning of all of this? Let me flip the question also. First of all, there are those, some people who are watching and thinking <laughs> that Mr. Fu Amani hates homosexuals and, <clears throat> and wants them to be to have big trouble land on their heads. <laughs> How do you respond to these? You've, have you heard some of these uh, claims well, that I, you are a it's, hater? It's part of the propaganda. I've had a few people. Mm -hmm. The good thing is, as I've said, four years ago, precisely on the 6th of March 2020, we opened what we call a holistic sexual therapy system, which is a fully paid for medical system underwritten by the coalition governing council which is made up of all the christian organization the muslim organization where we offer free services to anybody who's facing what we call sexual orientation and gender identity disorders where is this office we, we won't show you for good reason because we have a very strict what we call disclosure uh, uh you know legal regime we're not supposed to disclose mm. and i can share with you that we've treated close to three, four hundred people. How many uh, more? What, what kind of professionals are there? Great. We've got psychology. You know, it's a good question you've asked. We've got. We use an integrated system of medical care. We look. We look at psychology. We look at psychiatry. We look at endocrinology. That is the the, the, the medicine that looks at hormonal treatment for mm. people uh, with challenges like that. We also look at medicine because when they come to us, a lot of them are having problems with their uh, sphincter muscles because the penis, the anus is not meant for sex. Mm -hmm. The penis goes there and the sphincter muscle gets torn. So what are the uh, implications? Yeah, wh what's the what? What are the implications for? Oh, you, you know, you, you peel, you you and you, and you poop on yourself. yourself, and that's why they put on pampers. So we got to suture that, mm -hmm. and and we go through surgery. We cut or sew it up. You know, that's what I'm saying. Is that serious? Uh, yes. That's how serious it is. Some people, 90% of those who come to us, when we test, it's HIV AIDS. In fact, the, the percentage is even higher. And, you know, there was a particular day that was so touching. My whole team, this young man came to us, brilliant, bright young man who was going to the university. Uh, he said he was in gay activities. He was referred to us. We treated him. We, tr and we have a four system. So when you come, we walk through you through the basics, have a four, an interview, initial interview to make sure that you're genuine. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we have a full uh, profiling system that we go through. You answer lots of questions, about five, six pages, so that we can know exactly where the problem is coming from before we do a docket and we refer you to our psychologist who takes you through. Look, when we did the, st the next stage, which was the testing stage, mm -hmm. the young man had HIV AIDS. All my team broke down. Uh, Do Dr. Pierre Kubi, you can't believe it. He, he would have joined me, but I'm sure on the next occasion, you know, he'll be. Everybody broke down. And it's very painful to see young people like this going through lots of pain. Look, we are working on the coast. So we have a fully paid medical system. Mm -hmm. On the hormonal treatment, we spend close to. Uh, Thousand Ghana cities a month on hormonal treatment. How many people are on hormonal treatment now? Well, quite a number. Uh, they will get to about 10 or 11 thereabout. And for the intersex, I can tell you we have a wonderful story which is playing out. Young girl was referred to us. We have to ascertain 
where she really is in terms of her chromosomal sequencing. Whether she's more male or more female. Exactly. No, you see, people have a lot of light. They say, oh, non-binary. What, what does that mean? They keep on telling you that there are other sexes apart from male and female. by the people away from the abnormality. By the way, what's the science on the LGBTQ? They were been searching for the LGBT or her, gene, uh, homosexual the gene, gene. The gene. The Human Genome Project was undertaking over 50 years. Huh? Uh, scientists from more than 200 countries got involved in it. They isolated 22,300 genes that uh, predispose people to all sorts of things, including myself as an albino. They didn't find one single gene that predisposes anybody to homosexuals. Uh, I had my good friend Esla asking, oh, but there was a street gene. That is a very unscientific statement to make because I'm not your opposite. You understand what I'm saying? I'm an albino. I'm an abnormality. Question is, do LGBT people accept that their, their situation is abnormal? They don't. In fact, that is part of the propaganda. They say that LGBT, is it's, abno it's normal. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. And they uh, just suppose heterosexual behavior alongside homosexual behavior. Is that true? Let me ask you a question. Every homosexual relationship that goes on, there's a, uh, you know, they say it's homo, mm -hmm. male to male. But in the relationship, somebody acts as a female. Mm -hmm. And so what is this? Mm -hmm. Clearly shows you that there's a psychological flip. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to address. So for those who are saying, Moses Farm when he hates people, trust me, I have spent my own money and invested it together with the money that the doc, uh, the coalition has brought in setting up a medical system that is treating LGBT people. Hello. So who hates who? Go along the coast of in the uh, central region. We're dealing, you know, as a coalition, one of our mandate is to bring the message of the loving grace of Jesus Christ to those on the coast. Because we're Christians. Uh, uh, the Muslims have their own way in which we deal with them. Our faith is that, and, and the, the, Paul says it in Romans, it is a symptom of a rejection of God. So you've got to take the message down there. But bottom line, along the coast, from Cape Coast, Elmina, Commander Moray, right up to even Ifutu land, where Honorable Afenio Marking works. Children as low age, the ages as low as nine years, nine to 13. These are uh, uh, what's called pims who get hold of them, put them together, and open their anus and put in pentoa bottle, you know, to push it down their anus to see whether the hole is big enough so that they will become accessible to people who are going to prey on them. That's what, that's what is happening along the coast. In fact, what we're trying to do is to put all of them together. We are setting up what we call um, a, a children's youth, a beach youth, children. Uh, evangelism ministry and the Church of Pentecost through Pestles is trying to fund that. So these are Ghanaians who are doing this? Precisely, these are Ghanaians who are doing it and they, they, when the foreigners come in, they present these children as prey. Go to the coast of Elmina, I can take you right there. Uh, next time I'll bring you film footage for you to see. It is very sad and very painful. So when I hear people say, oh, there are more important issues. Really? I had one uh, musician, one who loved the Kobolo, whoever it is. For those of you who think that's not serious, look, Ola Secondary School. The headmistress told us that currently girls are being recruited uh, and they're paid as much as 1,500 Ghana cities to recruit more people into the whole LGBT uh, uh, lesbian uh, uh, cult. Go to the universities. It is happening all over the place. Our schools are being inundated. But for the advocacy that we put in, the LGBT movement would have funneled into the Ghanaian education system what we call comprehensive sexuality education. Yeah. And I'm sure you remember that. Yeah, the, 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 the In the books, end, the, the executive itself had been deceived. The president, I remember he was a gas. Oh, but we never uh, thought that this was... 
Mr. President, that is what it was about because it is a strategy. Mendoza, who is the head of PPA, Planned Parenthood Association, by the way, PPA was a four in the 50s and 60s and 70s, was a very good organization. It has been bought by George Soros. He's pumped close to $8 billion into that organization. He's bought the franchise around the world. And that's what they're using to push this agenda. Comprehensive sexuality education was an education strategy to catch our children young. What is the reason? They know me and you. You were speaking the ever and you were laughing at the oh, they were, I love the interaction. Because people like you and I, we don't like it. But they have to work it through the young people. So they change their minds. That's why advocacy is very important. So to catch them young. Exactly, strategy. So does the president know all of this? Because now the bill is going to end up on his desk and he has to take a decision as to whether to sign it or not, or to, to, sign not it. to sign it. Well, he's got a lot of information. He happens to be a very good friend of mine, but he's between the devil and the hard place. Because the level of information that he's supposed to have, he has it. He's got a choice. Uh, it has nothing to do with his own consanguineous feelings, or uh, matters of consanguinity, or filial feelings. It has to do with the position that he holds as executive president of the Republic of Ghana. And if you look at Article 1, it's very clear that sovereignty resides in the people of Ghana. And all the powers of government are supposed to be exercised for and on behalf of the people of Ghana and for their well-being. So the executive power that he has, he's not holding on his own. In law, if we say you're holding something for and on behalf of others, we've constituted you into a trustee and an agent. So he's working for us. So he's got to represent what Ghanaians feel and believe. And by the way, look at Article 34.1, which are the directive principles of state policy in the Ghanaian constitution. It's very clear. Article 34.1 says that all the directive principles of state policy are to be implemented by all state organs, president, judiciary, executive, the media, everybody, and in not only in the formulation of law, but also in policy formulation in the achievement of a just and fair society. And if you look at Article 39.1, it talks about our customary values and our moral values being such an important thing that the precipitated ones, the good ones, have to be funneled not only through formal education, but also informal education. Those are the values. And the president is obliged by law to, 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 not, not to resist because this bill was passed unanimously. 275 MPs all supported it. Were you surprised that there was not a single dissenting voice? I was not surprised because they know. I hear, hear Afenio Markin. By the way, Afenio was my student and I'm proud of what he's made of himself. But he knows that he's representing the people of Efutu. If he lies, and I'm challenging him, he should go to Efutu land and go and tell them that he believes that people who do these things must not be uh, punished, but they must be. He, he talks about community service. The people come from community. So if they go into the community, are they not likely to? To commit these things. His problem is, you know, if they go to prison, uh, there's homosexuality. Go, really? Has he been to the prison? He says he's been there. This is a matter of prison management. You know it because you've well traveled. In most good countries where prison management is done well, sexual offenders are never put together mm. with those who are involved in other offenses. They're never put together. They're secluded and they're guided. By the way, the issue I was telling you about how our bill originally had rules for flexible sentencing and had also rules for uh, care, treatment and support. Question, how was he pulled out of it? It was pulled out because the Attorney General wrote a piece and said that it was going to impose a cost on the charge. And you know it. Article 108 has been a, a mantra of those who say, oh, private member's bill, so long as it imposes a charge, then the president cannot sign it. Really? Because Article 108 is very clear. It says that if in the opinion of the person presiding, if you look at our the way we drafted it, it was very clear. We said the cost of the care treatment and support will be borne by the person who wants the help or service provided. It was very clear. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the president's, uh, the, the, the attorney general's objection was baseless. In any case, we went beyond that. We had a letter. I have a copy of the letter. I wanted to bring it. But uh, a letter was written and addressed to parliament by the Christian Council of Ghana, guaranteeing and underwriting every single cost of medical treatment. So if those provisions had been maintained in the law, trust me, anybody who had gone to, would have gone to court and said, oh, it was going to impose a charge, would have failed because the evidence was before uh, 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 the Speaker of Parliament. Well, by the way, it's not in it anymore. Mm. So how come those people who were using it as a trap are now saying, oh, but you are not uh, caring for the people, you shouldn't put them in prison right. because all, originally it was there.
By the way, there's a saving clause because now a provision has been made for regulations to be made by the Minister of Health for care, treatment and support. Do you go down on your knees and thank God for the existence of a private member's bill? Do you, do you think that if there was no private member's bill, this we would be, we would be having this conversation on this Wonderful family Wonderful question. I do thank God because I told you, we established this coalition in 2013 and what we have been about is prayer. By the way, we're going to uh, announce a prayer chain what, what and is that? fasting, you know, to support the bill mm. because it is God doing what he's doing. And by the way, before I end, I will share a certain testimony. Yeah. On I want to read the message though. What did you say? I want to read some messages for you. Well, fantastic. Yes. Well, you go, but quickly, yeah. I'm just saying that if we didn't have the private member's bill, mm -hmm. I don't think this government would not have the executive have exactly put, would have put the, this no, the, because the president said it when Kamala Harris came and I felt pained by the statement he made that this was not a legislation of his government and that it was a handful of MPs. That was a very painful statement coming from the president of the Republic of Ghana. Who, 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 who did it? Who, who did Let this? me show you why. Because no president in this country has come to power with the word of God than this president. The mantra, uh, you know. Uh, what is the mantra uh, I seem to have forgot? Uh, the, the, the one that he, he always says. The battle. The battle is the Lord. Where does it come from? In fact, one of the abiding memories of the president was at the last rally at the trade fair side, he reading uh, uh, Samuel and quoting David when he was articulating this view. Trust me, no president has risen to political power with the word of God than this president. That's why when he came, he said he had a covenant with God and he was building a cathedral. What is that supposed to mean? This is a president who believed in the spirit spiritual power of God and it was the God who made him president and we know that uh, homosexual activities is an abomination as far as God is concerned so how can you distance your government a government that assumed executive power because of God and I, I'm sorry he doesn't have to listen to those people around him because when we were praying they were not part of it some of them say they are atheists they don't even believe in God but strangely when the uh, the trappings and the success comes they want to enjoy it you know so I'm indicating, I'm responding to your question. I don't think if we didn't have a private member's bill, this legislation would have come from the executive, which is very sad because he should have articulated that view and pushed this agenda because of his fate, which he wears on his sleeves. And I love a man who loves the Lord. That's why I love him. I'm here with uh, Mr. Moses Fua Morning, Executive Secretary of the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values. WhatsApp number is 055-556-1034. I'm going to read some messages for you. Please do. All <laughs> right. Okay, here we go. Do, 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 uh, Please fact check all the Trump and MAGA conspiracy theories Phil Mwaning is spewing out. You can't just sit there and let him carry on with his scaremongering. What has George Pro uh, Soros got to do with this? Propaganda must stop. Why is Phil Mwaning doing this? We all know why. Why do you think they know? Why are you doing this? I have explained to you. That person <laughs> who is speaking, he hasn't spent a penny of his money. I know where it's coming from. I've spent my money Danny, creating a system for LGBT people. So Daniel, support the work of, of Phil Mwaning. Uh, please never give up. That's from Daniel. Isaac. Israel Amaglu, uh, what's your message? Uh, um, I have worked with USAID. They're the best people who never discriminate and treat all, com all in common. Please kindly tell them uh, we, we love all their support for Ghana. God bless them. But for, for LGBTQ plus bill, we are not interested, says I, uh, Israel. Mark says, Mr. Fo, what is in it for you? Uh, are you doing all this talking for nothing? There's nothing in it for me. What is it? It's just hell and care pe for people. And two, to make sure that Ghanaian's, Ghana's position is protected and Ghanaian children are protected. Maybe he doesn't, if he has a son who has his anus torn, he will understand what I mean. Good morning, GTV Breakfast. Do you really think about judgment when we die? The worst will happen when this thing is legalized in Ghana. And he's uh, told us exactly what he's talking about. Uh, let's see more messages. 055 Don't send us videos. We don't know what's there. Please, why will Ghanaians lead a demonstration against this? It's a big sign of our displeasure, uh, uh, unless they are part of the. Uh, and you want the. Unless they are, you're thinking, unless the prominent pastors and clergymen are part of the community, you want to see a demonstration. That's what he says. Uh, Kobe, uh, all right, more messages. Um, I think so far. Would he call the po police to arrest his son who comes to him and says he's gay? 
Well, he did, my son would never be gay. That's one, because I'm training him up well. And if he is, I'll make sure I refer him to the holistic sexual therapy system who will treat him. By the way, will you call it people? You know, I hear this bit of, oh, but will you police everybody around the world? P incest is an offense. Do the police police everywhere to see whether people are committing incest? Mm. That's a very lousy legal argument. Kofi in T. Good morning, Calf. Please, the incident he's reported from the coastline is serious and must be investigated. The, the children who have been groomed yes. across, along yeah, the coast. Well, if he comes, we'll show him the children. We're working with them. Uh, that's what we do all the time. General Ortega says, I admire the passion of Mr. Morning. Tell Mr. Fo that we depend heavily on the Western world for survival, and this bill means second independent struggle has begun and all must be ready for the consequences. When you hear the, 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 the financial and monetary arguments, no, what's it, it's your a response? lame argument. It is sad. It is totally uh, ludicrous for a country that's 67 years old, and this current government. One of the things is uh, going to be on aid. What's the meaning of that? It has, has to have meaning. We want to wean ourselves off it. Great policy by the government. And I think I can understand where the president is coming from. So we're going to hold a conference. I like dealing with solutions. That's why we have found a medical solution to the LGBT problem. So we'll soon call a conference. And we're going to consider how we can wean ourselves off these Brenton Wood institutions. By the way, at international law, they have no business telling us what to do and what not to do. Because they are not state parties. Uh, if you had a bit of time, I'll go into the international law bit of it because there's a lot of falsehood about lgbt rights being part of international law they are not yeah and even uh, after the finance ministry issued their calculations the about IMF. what imf was the imf came to say exactly. that it was not part of the precisely they don't get go they're lending the money to us yeah it's, 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 it's a business have, no, okay, it's a business, a business of transactions precisely, as as you know it's all part of the propaganda by those who want to push it Good morning, uh, lawyer Moses. Uh, please keep telling Ghanaians and government the truth. God bless you. I'm going to view her. Good morning, House. I really appreciate the educating us on this topic. It is evil, he <coughs> says. Trisha, uh, he has really educated me on this LGBTQ. I was scared for the lesbians and gays who will be hurt, but now I do get it. Kofi says, thumbs up to you. So keep them coming in. 055556. 10 you know, we're I, almost done we have a couple of minutes just you know i know you gave 45 minutes to her i hope you're going to give me but your producer fine we, i'll continue another just read some of the consequences of anal sex then people can see this on the cdc mm. this is the center for disease control exactly you know uh, this is a, a document i mean you can read it okay let's read okay the ones that uh, i've marked you these ones you've marked okay yeah. so since the beginning of the U.S. HIV epidemic in the early 80s, more cases of HIV infection have been attributed to the transmission route of AI. But this is not artificial intelligence. This is anal intercourse exactly. than to any other route of transmission. Exactly. These results now show that receptive anal intercourse has the highest risk for the trans transmission of HIV. That's when somebody receives the, exactly. anus, the penis exactly. into, into their anus. And it's 40 it times more. 17 times that of unprotected receptive vaginal intercourse. 13 times the risk of insertive when the man is, 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 is mounted. Uh, and twice the risk of needle sharing during injection drug use. Today it is acknowledged that having receptive anal intercourse with an HIV infected partner using a condom carries a substantial risk, which is three and a half times uh, than having unprotected insertive anal intercourse. Condoms only alone only partially reduce the risk of receiving, you know, uh, and with the addition of pro-exposure prophylaxis, the risk is further redu reduced. Uh, when one or more, both partners are infected with a sexually transmitted disease, even with condom risk, the use, the risks are very high. Men who have sex with men, a recent long-term study revealed that consistent condom use during anal intercourse was low. And there's uh, is a whole lot of it's statistics. Tough, yeah. And this is so from the Center for Disease, disease control. control. I've got oh. lots of it. Okay. You know, I've got lots of material that mm. we could have gone to to show you yeah. the dangers yeah. in all this LGBT. Let me just quickly yes. handle this bit of whether LGBT is part of international human rights law. Now, at international law, which was established in the Fisheries case, and every international law student knows it, there are two sources of international law. It's also captured in the uh, uh, ICJ, International Court of Justice Statutes, Article 38, uh, 1, you know, A to E. There are two sources, treaties and customary international law. All the UN treaties that Ghana has signed, either the UN Charter, Declaration of Human Rights, uh, UN Declaration of Human Rights, the International Covenant on Civil Political Rights, International Covenant on Economic, Cultural and Social Rights, the UN Convention on uh, uh, the Elimination of All Discrimination Against Women, mm. all those UN covenants that we've ratified, and most countries have ratified, nowhere would you see the words sexual orientation. Mm. It is not there. 
Now, people say, oh, we can read into these international covenants. There's a certain phrase in respect of classified uh, or people protected classes in international law. That is religion, race, uh, color, uh, uh, age. Those are the protected classes. You won't see sexual orientation. The word that is used, which they want to interpret to include LGBT rights, are all other status. That's what they seek mm. to read into it. That's my response. Go and read the International Convention, uh, uh, Treaty on uh, Vienna Convention on the uh, Law of Treaties. It's very clear. You cannot interpret a treaty to change the treaty obligations of a country that entered into the treaty or try to expand it. Mm. And even if you want to do it, it must be consciously done by the state party itself, not you and experts. Now, how did we get LGBT rights funneled into international law? What I'm trying to say is that in terms of treaty law, you will not see any UN treaty, and I'm challenging the Commission of Human Rights and Administrative Justice to show me, because sadly, Joe Whittle, who's supposed to be the Commission of Human Rights of Ghana, he's always arguing for an acceptance of this thing on some basis I don't understand. We'll confront him at the right time. But I'm saying that he should show me, and I'm challenging the, the person who sent the text propaganda, show me the law, as we say. He should show me the treaty that indicate that Ghana has executed that shows that we have accepted international obligations in terms of LGBT. So there's no treaty. If right. you want to read into it other status, you've got to go by the International Convention on the Law of Treaties and not interpret it against us. You know, we only undertake those obligations as and when we sign it or ratify it, not interpretations put on it by UN experts. Now, how did all of this happen? The second source of uh, law is what we call international customer international law. That one, there are two conditions. There must be uh, uses, which we call state practice, and then the other Latin expression, opinio, ju uh, opinio juris, servi necessitatis. Uses refers to state practice, constant state practice. What is the evidence in terms of state practice on LGBTQ+. There are 200 countries in the United Nations. Only 30 have passed laws supporting LGBTQ+ activities. 90% of UN uh, 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 you know, countries are against this. And UN resolution upon resolution, the LGBT movement has tried to pass it since 1976. They have never been successful. Even if the resolution that they've tried to sneak in, the level of opposition is so great mm -hmm. that it doesn't constitute international uh, state practice. You can't, you know. So, well, I mean, the, the law is there. We're going to argue in the court, but I just want to state okay. that it is not part of international human rights. Let me just feed you quick, quick information. How it happened that LGBT rights became part of international human rights law. In 2006, nine UN experts without authorization and 21 other uh, experts calling themselves experts, international experts, came together and did put together what they call the Yogo Carter principles. And then they began to funnel it through uh, international law writings saying that nation states are obligated to uh, follow I I these ob international obligations. So it has never been part of international law. It was fraudulently stolen international, international law uh, uh, provisions and has never been part of international law uh, uh, provisions. Indeed, the latest UN resolution, uh, UN Human Rights Council resolution that appointed or renewed the mandate on the aspect on you know, gender and discrimination, all of that. The voting was very close. In 2016, it was 23 to 18 with six abstentions. In 2019, it was 23 to 19. Ghana voted against it. So you can see a consistent opposition to this whole LGBT business. So it's not part of international law. Well, we're going to make the legal arguments in the Supreme Court if the opportunity arises. Can the Supreme Court sit on a bill that is yet to become a law? Fantastic question. You're not a lawyer, but you know. So I'm surprised. I thought, uh, you know, uh, what is his name, Richard Sky, two years ago. I mean, he knows that I was very important in his becoming a lawyer and the first thing you teach you cannot invoke the jurisdiction of supreme court unless there's been an enactment has a bill been been signed into law so what is the basis of his cause of action in the supreme court the cause of action has not accrued and richard sky knows it as a lawyer if he doesn't know it i would say shame on him what has surprised you most in this your advocacy to have this bill passed what has surprised me? Well, to be honest, you nothing that surprised me because let me end on the message that God gave to me uh, two or three years ago when we were bringing the bill. The Lord showed me clearly at four o'clock in the morning when I was praying that, look, we're going to be opposed. Uh, UN will oppose us, UN agencies, US, they will oppose us. But what the Lord said, 
thankfully, was that just as he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he, the Lord, was going to be with us. And any country or any organization that lifts its hand against Ghana, he, the Lord, will lift his hand against him. So, look, Ghanaians, don't be afraid. Have no fear. The Lord God is with us. And any country, I'm not going to say I'm going to dare them. Those people who are orchestrating, going to court, doing things, be careful. Because God is with us. And we will win. All we need to do is to activate the hand of the Lord. And thankfully, there's Easter coming. We're going to declare fast. We're going to pray. That's all we're going to do. We're going to pray. And we're going to activate the hand of God. And because God is on our side, the victory on the cross was achieved many, many, many years ago. So we know. That victory is on our side. It's a foregone conclusion. Will the president's hand be activated to sign the bill? Well, I hope it is. If it isn't, then it is going to be a huge, at a huge political cost. And I pity, uh, you know, the vice president, who thankfully was at my birthday. That you know, uh, or, you know, vice president, thanks very much for honoring me. But to be honest with you. He might as well be kissing his presidential ambitions goodbye. The president is a very smart politician. I think he will look at these matters uh, because the MPP will struggle a lot if they want to come against the will of all Ghanaians. And by the way, 93, you were quoting the Afrobarometer report. Huge majority of Ghanaians don't want it. Indeed, they wanted even a constitutional amendment to that effect. And for those who say we're going to the Supreme Court, well, the Supreme Court judges are going to rule. I'm not going to prejudge what they're going to say. But this might even go beyond the Supreme Court. We'll push for a constitutional amendment to put it there black and white, that the Constitution of Ghana is against LGBT rights. That's the next stage we're going to go to. So we're not even going to leave it to the Supreme Court alone. So those, for those of you who think that it's going to end with the Supreme Court. Well, tough luck. The interview, unfortunately, has to end now. No, no problem. We'll Thank continue. you very much. It's Moses Fuwa Morning, Executive Secretary of the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values with a conversation here. To sign or not to sign, that's a question that the President has to ponder. That is the question.